can Jane unclog her arteries with diet after her heart attack? What is absolutely the best diet for Jane in the aftermath of a heart attack and how can it play a pivotal role in her recovery? Let me introduce you to Jane, a 47-year-old government worker, devoted mother of two, whose life took a dramatic turn in the winter of 2019. While at work, Jane experienced severe chest pain and shortness of breath. Concerned, she rushed to the local emergency room only to be confronted with the diagnosis that it would reshape her entire life, a heart attack, a myocardial infarction. Jane's journey does not end here. Is Jane alone? Jane is not alone. In the United States alone, someone has a heart attack every 40 seconds. Every year, about 800,000 people in the United States have a heart attack. 600,000 plus of them are the first heart attack and 200,000 are people who are hit with a second heart attack. And one in five heart attacks is silent, meaning you have the damage in your heart muscle, but you're not aware of it. What should Jane eat after a heart attack? What is the best diet in the world for Jane? Today, we are exploring the verdant world of plant-based diets, where the bounty of the earth becomes our greatest ally in promoting our health. If you're following a plant-based diet, you are not alone. A Gallup poll last year, 2023, showed 4% of Americans say they are consider themselves vegetarians, 1% consider themselves vegan. Interesting enough, women are three times more likely to be vegetarians than men. But millions of people uh, worldwide are following a plant-based diet. In North America alone, 39% of the population is actively trying to incorporate more plant-based foods in their diet. Let's start to what a plant-based diet is all about. Well, most plant-based diets uh, focus on uh, plant-based sources, uh, fruits, uh, vegetables, uh, nuts and seeds, uh, legumes, and beans and peas and lentils and whole grains. And in general, vegan and vegetarian diets exclude all animal products, uh, uh, meat, uh, dairy, eggs and poultry and uh, seafood and fish. But there are significant variations among the different subcategories of vegetarian diets. Let's talk about the different types of plant-based diets. In one end of the spectrum, we have the vegan diets, where we exclude all animal products and uh, all derived animal products. And you have the vegetarians, They're strictly vegetarian, not a lot different from uh, vegans. Then we have the lacto-vegetarians. They eat dairy, they milk, yogurt, and uh, cheeses. Then we have the ovo-vegetarians. They eat eggs, but no other animal products. Then you have the lacto-ovo-vegetarians. They eat dairy and they eat eggs as well. Then we have the pesco-vegetarians, the pescatarians. They eat fish and seafood, but no other animal products. And the other end of the spectrum, we have the semi-vegetarians, the partial vegetarians, uh, or flexitarians. Uh, they eat animal and plant-based foods, but they emphasize uh, plant foods. And examples of the semi-vegetarian diets of flexitarians are the Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet. At the heart of the plant-based eating lies the abundance of fruits and vegetables, bursting with vitamins and minerals and antioxidants, from crunchy kale to sweet berries. These colorful treasures protect our arteries by reducing inflammation, lowering cholesterol levels, and neutralizing harmful free radicals. Plus, their high fiber content promotes digestive health and helps to regulate your blood sugar levels, keeping our hearts happy and our bodies thriving. Where do vegans and vegetarians get their proteins from? Legumes, including all beans, uh, lentils, and uh, chickpeas, nuts and seeds, uh, are another cornerstone of plant-based diets, uh, offering not only plenty of uh, protein, but fiber and essential nutrients. So by incorporating legumes uh, into your meals, you not only satisfy your hunger, but also support your heart health by lowering your cholesterol levels, stabilizing your blood sugars, and improving your digestive health. 
and whole grains, uh, the whole wheat, whole pasta, brown rice, quinoa, and oats uh, round out the plant-based plate with their fiber-rich goodness. By opting for whole grains over refined grains, you're providing your body with sustained energy, uh, promoting satiety, and supporting heart health. Plus, their natural abundance of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants helps protect your arteries and reduce the risk of a heart attack. And although experts in nutrition and lifestyle medicine may not agree in every aspect of nutrition, it is safe to say they all concur that refined grains and sugar-sweetened beverages, added sugars, are to be avoided. We cannot talk about plant-based diets without talking about Ornish diet to reverse coronary disease. Dr. Dean Ornish published the Lifestyle Heart Trial demonstrating that intensive lifestyle changes uh, led to regression of coronary plaque uh, one year. And this was published in the uh, Journal of American Medical Association in Action 98. And then they continued the study for another five years, showing even more shrinkage of plaque. On the other hand, the control group, the standard American diet, showed more plaque, more clogging of uh, their arteries. The diet was a low-fat, plant-based diet that not only improved your coronary arteries, but decreased the cardiac events, the heart attacks, the need for coronary angioplasty, need for bypass surgery, and need for hospitalization. And these are hard endpoints. That is what you want when you're looking at a study. I do not care if a medication lowers my blood pressure. What I care is does it lower my risk of having a stroke or a heart attack. A word of caution, the Ornish program to unclog your arteries is much more than a diet. It's really a lifestyle that includes exercise, includes stress management, includes uh, sleep management, yoga, meditation, and improved social connections. Another plant-based diet we need to mention is Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn's diet. Dr. Esselstyn is director of the heart disease reversal program at Cleveland Clinic. He's also the author of Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, a book he published in 2007, in which he argued for a low-fat, uh, whole food, plant-based diet that avoids all animal products and all oils, and even nuts and seeds. As Dr. Silstein puts it, if it has a mother, don't eat it. What is the best diet for Jane and Americans that have a heart attack every 40 seconds? Uh, Semi-vegetarians, the flexitarians, the partial vegetarian diets like the Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet are certainly a major improvement over the standard American diet. However, for people like Jane and me that have coronary artery disease, I believe for the last 10 years that the whole foods plant-based diet was the best. And that's what I has been following. I now believe the pesco vegetarian diet that includes two to four servings of fish a week may be even best, although not by much. But these are, in my view, the top two contenders. And to learn more about the Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet, watch the video, uh, Heart Attack and Clogging Your Arteries Naturally. I'll put the link above and in the description below. But is it all or none? Incorporating elements from each of these dietary patterns can create a symphony of flavors and nutrients that nourish our bodies and our hearts, even if you do not dramatically change your diet. And just incorporate one serving of fruits and one serving of vegetables a day, you reap great health benefits. And remember that the path to a healthier heart begins with the choices we make every single day, one bite at a time. What happened to Jane? Because of weather conditions, the ambulance service was on hold, the helicopter could not fly. Jane eventually had a stent, a short wire mesh tube inserted in the main coronary artery, uh, known as the left anterior descending. However, because of the delay, Jane was left with significant heart damage and she has been struggling with shortness of breath and fatigue symptoms of congestive heart failure. Are you going to be proactive or reactive? Do you want to avoid a heart attack, a stroke, or do you want to wait until you suffer a heart attack like Jane did and other Americans? The choice is yours. What's next for Jane? 
The Jane story does not end here. In our upcoming videos, we'll explore additional avenues and strategies that to further enhance Jane's cardiovascular health. Always remember, your health is your most precious asset. Take control. See you next video.